Elijah Hopkins, hello relatives and again uh, welcome uh, and thank you for joining us here on the Buffalo Chasers podcast. Uh, we are coming to you live from Wakchinja Wakpa Wonspe Wankantuya. 
uh, Fort Peck Community College. It's, it's great again to have you here. Um, and with the, the Buffalo Chaser podcast, we're, we're joined by uh, Dekshi, uh, Mr. Tommy Christian. Um, we will start us off in a good way with, with a prayer before we segue into our, our topic this week. So if you could, Dekshi, uh, offer us up a, a prayer in a good way. Pidama. Oh, Toshka, that's it. Well, I don't know. I'm going to see you guys. 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 We'd like to welcome you all here in a good way, and we offer you a good hearty handshake. We're going to speak to you on this day from our hearts, and in that we want to always understand the respect that is due based on this uh, uh, versatility that we're experienced here as in, in respect to the, this virus that's going around. So in order to keep everybody safe, we are, are choosing to... Uh, share in such a good way, but at the same time, understanding the sensitivity of our value system, uh, the, 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 the tobacco questions that may be uh, asked at this time, our intent is to go forward as well and as respectfully as we know how. And so we're going to start this off in a spiritual way with a prayer. So, Ushima lo metakia fi omakia wachtekia tante wachte ambe tukila ushima omakia. Atu kashila Makatanka, Tadeuya Toba, Nishimakana Makaina, Nakumitaki, Piwanagi Makia, Saya, Ge Ochoka, Sahiope, Nichoke, Nichoke, Ushia Kenitaki, Pinaha, Wayaza, Pi Nishimakaman, Okia Chani Taki, Pinaha Chante Yoksi, O Mani, O Wichakiapo, Ushi, Talapo, Atukashila Makatanka, Na Tukashila Na Makatanka, Oyasi Oyasi Chanku Luta Aza Omani Owi Takia O Ushu we tell up. Dixiapo Mitaki Apinaha we know Chalapi we chat lapi na kaya japi Okshilapi when chintilapi na koshkapi na we koshkapi chanku washte unk upi we chose any unk upi okia wo ushi we tell up. Atu kashila makantanka ampetile naha Dixiapo mitaki api agichita oyate kizuya ekta na hawichasha bile na wea bile o wichaki apo ushi wichala po chanku wa shte unkupi o ushi ate. Wopi lai chichi apelo ampetu wa shte mayak u na ha oki awo na ha dixiapo mitaki api na ha wun spekia oyate ki wayawa O oyate ki o wichaki apo ushi wichala po nasu wa shake unk upi wa nasu wa shake unk upi o ki awo ushi wichala po. My grandfathers, as we come to you on this day, we want to ask that you continue to understand the importance of what it is that we wish to do here in a good way. We all go in a respectful manner, so we ask that those that are listening will understand the importance of this diversity, as well as understanding the importance of the uniqueness that we represent as we continue to instill and encourage our young people to be enriched and enhanced to make this uh, uh, future a better place for all of us as it relates to the Changleshka Wakan, the Wamakashka Oyate, Mushiake, Okiakawa, O Mitake Oasi, Wamakashka Oasi. Oh, Takuase, you here, Thank you for that beautiful prayer, studying us off in a, a good way. So, Again, here we are. Petu de washte, another beautiful day. Um, again, for those of you that are listening for the first time, maybe you're out there and wondering what the heck are we doing. Uh, we are here to spread uh, the joy of, of of good mental health uh, in a Buffalo Chaser way. Uh, in our culture, we try to utilize uh, culture to uh, combat uh, unhealthy things that affect our mind and we want to provide a, a service for our students and for our community members and utilizing uh, technology in the best way that we can. Um, we try to 
reach as many as we can uh, so that we have an outlet to, to maybe learn a little bit. And as we share, that's one thing when I talk with uh, Dex a lot, even before we even go live on these things and we, we discuss kind of where we want to go with things and how we want to present things uh, to do it in a, a natural way. Uh, one of those ways is, is via just a conversation. So I think that's what kind of has guided us and uh, with uh, Dexy's um, experience and his, uh, his leadership and throughout the years in different capacities, he brings a, a good element here that we, we really need. And so we'll continue to have different topics every week, you know, and I think this is week number uh, Akewaji, Ake, uh, number 11, I believe. And so, uh, man, we're still here going strong every Thursday from three to four, man. I feel like uh, we're gaining a lot of uh, headway. I get a lot of positive feedback from week to week. And and uh, before I, I forget, those of you that are on Facebook that are following us live, uh, please just give us a like or a share. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put it in the comment section. But we are doing weekly um, drawings for those of you that choose to participate. Um, well, who's the winner, winner, chicken dinner from last week? Then <laughs> let's see here. Let's uh, who's the winner, winner, chicken dinner? Let's anyway, make that, uh, win that. Let's make that announcement right now. Here, let's uh, have it on my phone here. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay. Here. Go win now, uh, win uh, keeping everybody in suspense here. Oh, no, not that one. Oh. Let's see here. He's got that dandy machine over the sound effect. You should press that button, make you sound like Mickey Mouse. In the <laughs> okay, here we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so we have our two items is a, a Cho Buffalo Chasers jacket. Normally, Dexy is is rocking it, but we are uh, yeah, right there. For those of you that are following us on online, look at that jacket embroidered, our new Buffalo Chasers logo. Uh, different sizes there, black. It's a good uh, springtime jacket, but our winner, winner, chicken dinner, is Junior White Eagle. You are the winner, Junior oh, White Eagle, of that uh, Cho jacket. We also have a, a Kindle Fire tablet. The winner of that is none other than Heather Grandboy. So if you are listening, uh, you can retrieve those at Student Services, but we will try to contact you if we don't hear anything back and mail those out to you. So if you do not live in the area, we can definitely mail those out to you. So uh, again, um, Give us a like, give us a share, and we will announce those winners for today's uh, week 11 episode next week during the podcast live. So well, I don't know about you, Dex, but I think um, we discussed a little bit of, of a topic based off feedback from the community members, questions that we've had, and uh, everything revolves around mental health, utilizing culture, but we, we figured a good uh, discussion topic would be the topic of, of racism versus ethnocentrism. And so with that, we can, uh, I think there's a lot of different ways that we can go, but um, if you want to start us out, I can kind of chime in anytime. Well, sure. You know, and, and I think it's important for our people to realize that um, one of the things that, that I try to perpetuate out there in my travels and my discussions and whatnot is um, uh, because I, I was referred to as a racist, <laughs> because all I did was go to ceremony, go to Sundance, go to powwows, and, you know, just kind of hang around Indians and uh, our leadership felt that I was being racist, uh, but it was a political agenda. And we tried to remain apolitical here on, on this uh, podcast because we feel it's important. We don't want it affected uh, in, in a negative way. Uh, because again, as we do these things, we realize that um, with this attitude, inclusiveness in that Changleshka. Everybody has a, a place in that circle of life. And, and uh, to, to go beyond that, to try to become exclusive is kind of unnatural to what it is that we're wishing to accomplish here. And, and one of the ways that the, that the 
they, they do this is they try to make us look like we're racist. There's no way a person of color can be racist. Uh, the reason I say that is because if you look up racism in the dictionary, I'm sure you'll find um, uh, a word that's associated with that racism is superior. Here, do you mind if I chime in and give you a definition that I found? And just to give a little context. Yeah, so one of these that I found, I think it was uh, Webster or one of those online, was the definition of racism. A belief that race is a fundamental determinant of human traits and capacities, and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. So you're right. It's in there. Exactly. And so therefore... You know, to maintain that sense of cons consistency in regards to our value system uh, with a total indication of respect, that inclusivity that we, we uh, promote or perpetuate in our discussions is one that we, we have no understanding of becoming superior over anything. We do not have dominion over anything. We're all the same in this uh, eyes, if you will, if it has eyes, but uh, uh, again, uh, re realizing, again, there's no reference to gender either in respect to that, so you've got to spiritually open your mind up to understand that um, uh, if we researched racism, you would find that attached to that, that title of racism is a, a very capitalistic approach to how you view life. And along attached to that is this colonialized perspective uh, for the sake of dominance or control of, of, a, of another culture or society, whatever the case is. And so that is totally um, doesn't apply to our belief system or our value system as it uh, comes from uh, natural law because of that, the, the sake of inclusivity. And so we have to understand racism doesn't necessarily apply to us, although because of uh, Stockholm Syndrome, I guess, and we spoke a little bit about that last week, is uh, uh, we take on some of these characteristics conveniently <laughs> to defend our cognitive dissonance as it relates to the, the difference that exists out there. And so we take on those characteristics and we try to defend them. But uh, in respect to that, uh, there, there's no way that people of color can be racist because they're not in control of anything or nor do they want to be as it relates to this uh, natural law. And, and I can dare say that uh, it's reflected in our language. Our language, when we speak it properly, it's, it's a language of respect. So there's no sarcasm in our language. What we say is what we mean. What we mean is what we say. And so in that, it's always been an indication of uh, uh, respect as it relates to communicating. And uh, Coach Ka here was talking about, a, about our discussions earlier, and we always make, make reference to that relationship as we speak, because that, that shows uh, an indication of respect. In all regard, um, <clears throat> there was a, a time I was uh, at a powwow, and, a couple of Indian guys were arguing. They were arguing, almost fighting, eh? And I asked my dad, I said, hey, look at those guys. He said, I said, what are they doing? He said, and not to be derogatory or segregate, but understanding the principle of uh, what it means to be um, acceptance of these characteristics of the white man, he said, they're acting white. I said, sure. you racist or what? He said, no. He said, I'm not that he said they're acting white when they act like that because Indians don't do that. We would uh, understand the importance of representing not only ourselves, but we rep also represent our family. And even more than that, we represent the tribe in which we come from. And so you wouldn't act like that in public because that's very disrespectful. And I said, well, why do you say they're acting white? He said they're acting like that because they want something. And so you can take it from there and figure that out. And I'm not telling you anything. I'm just sharing with you because to help you understand, that's the perspective of reality. And, and that's why I always say 
observation is the best teacher. When you sit back and you observe and you see these things going on, and uh, again, we, we tease a lot in, 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 in our way. Uh, uh, I always say they, they call me racist, and I say, I'm not racist. They say, why not? Because I go. And I'm teasing. In order for them to have an opportunity to understand that my, I, don't, uh, I don't live a racist life, but I do live a life of, like uh, my nephew was saying earlier, this attitude of not being afraid of being ethnocentric. Um, and again, we spoke a little bit about that last week about this uh, ethno ethnocentrism or whatever they, however they say that, is uh, the Jewish people do that and they're accepted. And the reason they do that is that they're, because they're hanging on to the values of their culture that come from their Quran that helps them understand the importance of their decision-making process with a sense of moral and ethical values. And so we would hope that their decisions are that when they choose to breed within their own bloodline, uh, when they choose to speak their own language, when they choose to discipline themselves, to adorn themselves with appropriate regalia, whenever uh, a certain times of year come around, you see them with their little caps on, and you see them wear uh, these various colors of uh, Serapis or whatever they have, whatever they wear, whatever that is, I don't know what that is, and I apologize if I offend anybody, but that's just being ethnocentric as it relates to identifying who you are, what you are, and why you are, and then sharing that without being um, imposing. We don't want to infringe or impose on anybody's right to exist, but in a respectful way, we want to hang on to who and what we are. So we know why we are here. And that's basically the same concept in which we choose to live without uh, perpetuating this or promulgating this attitude of racism, because that doesn't apply here. But being ethnocentric and promoting your own identity is not a problem either. That's why I always share with people that um, uh, I, I, I don't mind going to things that are not of our culture. I do, but the majority of my time I spend amongst our own people in understanding the importance of that, that knowledge seeking or, or understanding the diversity that exists out there, getting away from this pan-Indianism sort of a thing. You, you think, Toshka, see how that, that pan-Indianism, uh, if you say we're indigenous to the North American continent, that's kind of got a little bit of attitude of pan-Indianism, like we're all the same and we're not. Oh. Well, diversity that exists out there also applies to the uniqueness based on our language, our, our cultural orientation, and our, our uh, ceremonial protocols, and uh, all that good stuff is based on societies and clanship and, of course, tribes and families. So when we promote those sorts of things, we got to be strong enough in that belief and understanding of that in order to go forward without imposing or infringing on anybody else's right to exist. Now, does that make sense, uh, Coach Guy? Help me out. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think uh, <laughs> adding to the conversation, uh, and we talked about this a little bit last week and then even um, earlier today as we were uh, visiting a little bit, is just this the idea of racism and then so being ethnocentric. So ethnocentric isn't uh, inherently good or bad it's 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 that we are um promoting uh certain cultural things that might give us strength and we want to preserve that and so um i think that it doesn't necessarily mean that we are blind to other cultures right we're just kind of promoting those things and it's something to that i think is is beneficial to help us maybe learn our language cultures because that's how we're gonna succeed and it's 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 healthy i, th I think it's healthy yeah. And it reflects on your self-esteem, your self-respect, on who you are, and in re regards to the, your identity. Eh? And then you take that further, then you have a better opportunity with a clear mind and control of all your faculties to pursue your purpose and your dedication during this time that you are here on Mother Earth. Because eh? we also talked about, in any of these languages, the ones that I understand, there's not a word for goodbye. Eh? Like in our language, you say, I shall see you again. 
and spiritually speaking, not talking about this next dimension that we'll go to and return to where we believe we came from. And so that's what he's talking about when he's saying consistency in this manner in which we approach this time we spend here, especially because of uh, this virus that's going around and this, this um, adapted uh, way in which we're exercising our versatility to address this ability to communicate. So now in that process, that's what we're wishing to do, but with respect. That's why we start the, the, the podcast with a prayer is to maintain that indication of respect uh, as it relates to some of these characteristics of um, um, Obagi, for instance, eh? that's uh, offering tobacco for information. And also realizing uh, the tobacco you offer is not necessarily the cigarette tobacco, it's our own tobacco. We have what they call chinshasha. We make that, and, and that's a spiritual thing too, but we'll evolve. Hopefully we can get into all of these sorts of things and evolve into understanding that that uniqueness that uh, we're representative of here on the uh, Nakona Dakota Makha, uh, the, the Unchi Makha that we walk on here, that, that land that is ours, Makochi, they say, okay? this, this land that belongs to the Assiniboine and the Sioux people here, and, and realizing it's not addressing pan Indianism, but we realize the uniqueness of the ceremonial ways and, of course, the the, the society ways and, and the, the uh, clannish ways in which we go forward because we're not all the same. And so we address that pan Indianism amongst ourselves. I hope I'm not confusing anybody. Maybe you could clear it well, up. I think you're, you, you touch on some good topics. I think um, because we, we want to promote uh, having an open mind, yeah. not to be like a dualistic, good or bad, right or wrong. It's, uh, it's having respect. And I think when we talk about ethnocentrism we're respecting different cultures uh, oh, not because based off superiority so like racism mm -hmm. is a like a social construct like you talked about has probably been around since the dawn of capitalism and, and colonialization those types of things right that we discussed and so um with ethnocentrism there's no hierarchy at least i don't look at it that way you know where we respect the differences and um, it, it enhances um, because we all have to to work together, you know, within different cultures. Our students here, they're going to have to, they choose to um, get higher level of education outside of our institution. They're going to really have to integrate with other cultures and, and and make it work for them. But the way that I think that the best way that they can do that, that to be successful, whatever route that they go to have that open mind and, and really to embrace different cultures and with but at the same time not compromising your own you know so i think that's it's a good conversation to have one of the other things that i think was um helpful for people to to think about was um something i discussed with dex you know it was like well maybe that's some a good good example that uh people can maybe like at least think about some of our students people that might not know the difference between how two different cultures might value two different things and where they intersect, there could maybe be the perception of um, conflict. And so uh, several years ago, I was at a, a graduation ceremony, high school graduation ceremony. I seen a, a young man. It was a mixed uh, group of high school graduates. At a border town. At a border town, uh, Indians, non-Indians. And then one of the these individuals, a young Indian man here, was uh was there and he he did what a lot of our, our people do is he, he adorned himself with the eagle feather that he had earned and he put it in his his hat uh he didn't attach to his hair necessarily but it was attached to the hat and then so he sat through his graduation someone was watching it and then um, their families were there and there was also um and like a lot of high school graduations um at the end of the the graduation ceremony what do they do they throw their hat up in the air um, but this individual's hat, uh, eagle feather, was tied to this hat. And so he he was happy to be there, and he took his hat, and he winged it up in the air, man, and that feather was flying in the ground and hit the ground, you know. So that in itself, I think, was an example of an individual meaning well uh, that had a lot of pride in his culture, but, but at the same time, he was trying to integrate into um, – 
another culture's values of celebrating an accomplishment and throwing of the hat. Yeah. So I think there was a lot of well, uh, some good intention there and they're well-meaning, but it, that can be uh, viewed as maybe being uh, disrespectful to that, that feather of that bird of, of Tunkashina, of what it represents. And that when that eagle feather touches the ground, that might not be a good thing. You know, sometimes powwows will completely shut down. I've seen when eagle feather hits the ground, they'll stop everything and they'll have some individual, an elder come in and pray over it. And so I think if a student, uh, anybody that's listening has ever experienced something like that, you, you kind of understand, but maybe this individual didn't, and we don't want to vilify them, but at the same time, we, we want to, I think it's a good example of how maybe, um, we can approach them um, to discuss why we might, they won't want to think twice about that. And there's ways that they could do it in a respectful way. Maybe tie it to your hair. It's not connected to your hat. You could still throw your hat. Yeah. So what do you think about that, Dex? You know, and, and that's, that's that, that diversity that exists out there. And we don't, you know, the, the young man, of course, we all seen graduations where they take their hat off and they throw it in the air and they pass or where they take the top and put it on one side, the other side, or like at West Point, they all throw their hats in the air because they're no longer going to be uh, those sorts of people anymore. They're going to be officers and, and, and so they don't need that hat no more. But in, in our respect, that, that was probably done based on just naivety. And that's where our podcasts are wishing to uh, really present to our people is understand. And that's why it's good for Indians and non-Indians to understand uh, our protocols as it relates to such things as eagle feathers. And, and we see that also in our Indian country, ceremonies, some of these guys take these things on and they're not understanding like, even in respect to you see all these people wanting to be medicine men, they wanted to be holy men or something like that. And here, me, to me, I see, I see stuff like that and I said, well, um, a lot of the, the wapia, wichasha, wapia, wapi, has got to be in your leniency okay, in order for you to do that. And a lot of them don't understand that. They think it's a, it's a form of learning how to be this or be that, not realizing the importance of it. it's got to be in your bloodline in order for you to be effective. And so uh, a lot of them test it out and challenge it out and very good at it, some of them but it really doesn't fully work for them because of that lack of leniency, but they sure go through the motions very well, eh? And so in that, you'll see sometimes it works, sometimes for others it don't work. And it's probably because of something like that. But it, it's, it's, it's very subjective as it relates to why somebody would want to do that, but we don't try to, to discourage those from that are practicing our cultural value system and that understanding that protocol because that's a promotion of our way of life or that spirituality in which we represent. It's not religious per se because we don't follow a doctrine, but it's very disciplined and so it becomes a way of life and a spiritual uh, perspective in regard to that. So we don't say nothing. So my dad would tell me, so when you see stuff like that, my son, just pray that sometime in the future it may work for them uh, or whatever reason. And so that's what I mean by being subjective. And, and in regards to that, uh, if you do have a medicine man or a medicine woman in your lineal tree, and things will, will happen for you and it'll guide you in a good way if that's the way you choose to live that uh, and these things will work for you. So it's not you're not blessed, you're not chosen. Uh, it's just something that is in your bloodline. Because I have a strong belief in a, um, genetic memory as well. And so so we, we work like that. And people will come to understand the importance of following those things and supporting those types of individuals to where uh, we understand how to respect them. And that's where we include all of our people. Uh, we're talking about the black, white, white, red, and yellow um, representing the, the yellow, representing the Chinaman, the black representing the black, <laughs> the white, red. Ah, give me them. <laughs> 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 it, it, 
it could represent that, but at the same time, I don't think heaven has a place that's segregated for just the blacks and just the whites. For the Indians over here to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys come this way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that, that that's not been consistent with our spiritual concept of uh, what this next dimension that we're preparing ourselves for. You know, the, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, my dad would always tell me is, um, you know, uh, Lakota Hemacha to Kehia, Lakota Wamacha to Kehia, Lakho Wicho Kante Kligano, Lakho Wicho Kante Kriada. And in that, that means um, you're an Indian first, I'm an Indian first, and it's, I, it's hard to be an Indian, but I love my Indian ways. Now, if you change that word Indian into human being, that's the intent of that statement. And at the two legged, okay? The hoo hoo new body, the, the two legged, that, that's inclusive of all of human beings. And so it doesn't necessarily just mean Indians, although we say it like that. And you could say, that means just Indians. That don't mean uh, common man, that just means like all of human beings. That's how we say that. So that diversity that exists there, once you come to understand uh, the way we, we share these things, the intent is inclusive of all. Okay? Make sense, nephew? Oh, oh. I think that's a, also a good uh, example um, with, with, with the Chahadeshka Wakan, um, how that could be a, a misguided uh, belief that it's segregated. And yeah, really yeah. It represents humanity and like uh, the cycles of, of life. A lot of probably other different things too, but uh, it's a good example. I think also like the uh, the topic of pan Indianism, pan Indianism is important, um, just because you know we discussed earlier a little bit about, say, for example, it might be to the benefit to have pan Indian Indianism in the situation where, uh, say, tribal colleges were part of uh, the uh, yeah. AHEC, yeah. The American Indian Higher Education Consortium. We have a all different tribes of these different nations have these community colleges, tribal uh, colleges. So we gather together um, for the uh, our, our mutual benefit of all of our of our of our tribes, right? But you could say that that's pan Indianism. We have a common goal or some underlying things, right? But um, there's uh, other examples where, but we're all still unique. At that same time, we, we still gather together. We have our own different uh, missions and whatnot, different tribal histories and culture. But that's just an idea. The other um, topic we talked about was what happens if um, pan Indian in, pan Indianism is unchecked. Let's say, yeah. for example, if a uh, well-meaning uh, individual is is sharing uh, cultural knowledge with a non-Indian relative, and then there's a maybe a runaway. Next thing you know, these um, Washichuia are wearing oh, feather caps and they're, they're, they're getting painted up and they're going down runways as models and they're getting paid mazaska ota, yeah. you know, or, and they're, they're maybe they're, it could be even well-meaning. They just want to go take pictures out in the, the forest and be connected, you know, but, but really they're, that's a, they're, they're gross, grossly uh, misrepresenting uh, the culture and the intent but patronizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, and those things, but again, this is what we're wishing to accomplish with, uh, again, this, this podcast to kind of help all of the peoples understand how important that uh, uniqueness is amongst various regions in which they go. Maybe someplace that's acceptable, but in Indian country, especially reservation Indians, they find it very offensive and so patronizing and it's to us that represent being disrespectful but and when we can communicate the importance of not pandemism in us in, into the same category our common denominator is our spirituality but in at the same time our our uniqueness addresses the, our language and our protocol on how we go forward and it's usually based on uh, for the sake of survival or, or in the best interest of uh, our continued growth as a people. And so that's different. Uh, the weather up here is different, but down south, it's 
totally different. Man. That's what my dad told me. He said, uh, my son, he said that you see a lot of uh, Native American church members up here. And he asked me, he said, well, you got to remember now, you're a pipe man. I said, well, yeah. He said, but um, that medicine, if it was meant for up here, it would grow here. He said, that was meant for our relatives down in the south to help them deal with the heat. He said, but be, because of Wovoka or the way that was incorporated at Native American Church, some of our people have taken it on. We don't argue about that. We don't, we don't do that because that's them. That's the way they see it. That's what helps them understand the importance of this moral, ethical value system that they choose to live by. He said, so we understand that. And so we live by that, we respect that. And we don't become segregated or racist or talk bad about them because that's making them strong. We don't make excuses for them. We don't make up superstitions about them. We don't talk about them um, badly, but we just wish good things for them. That's why he said when you go to a ceremony and, and you pray, like uh, we hope it works for them. That's our intent is we hope that works for them as it relates to some of these different avenues. And of course, it was shared with me uh, at the same time along that same line in that particular conversation, he shared with me, there's as many ways to go to God as there is blades of grass. And we respect each and every one of those ways. And, and so I said, okay. And so he kind of put it in perspective for me in regards to um, being judgmental or critical of other things that are different. And that would, if I did not have that teaching, that would get me caught up into this attitude of racism. Eh? <laughs> Does it make sense? You see where that evolves from and how, how easily it is to become a racist in respect to that because they're not like me. I'm better than them or that comparative thing as opposed to uh, just understanding they have theirs and we have ours and accepting that all the truth. Mm. So make sense, Coach Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 good examples. Good examples. Um see there's a lot of different uh, I guess avenues we could go on this topic. There's a, a lot of different areas. Um let's see here. Well um, <coughs> kind of getting towards the end of the hour. Is there anything Major, you, else you wanted to talk about, Dex? Um, you, you know, the, the, there's one thing that uh, in respects to racism, you know, a lot of us have taken it on just, just um, again, for the sake of believing in something. Eh? And so, of course, there's Indians and non-Indians that live here in, uh, on this reservation. And, and again, we seem to have survived uh, by some degree as it relates to the toleration of the, that diversity that exists out there in, in respect to how different we are. Well, that we need to bring that out. We need to talk about that elephant in the room and that being that, that their own uniqueness to how they do things and our own uniqueness on how we do things. Well, how did we get that to now? How did we continue to understand the importance of coexisting in here? Because again, here, uh, it's quite different that, like, when I go to Canada, in Canada, their Indian land is their Indian land. It's not doesn't have incorporated cities or municipalities in there. Their Indian, their their reserves, it's all Indian land. Whereas down here, we have cities, incorporated townships, and municipalities, and and our reservation is a hundred miles by seventy miles wide, and they can't relate. It's hard for them to accept the fact. There's no uh, checkerboard or yeah, multiple yeah. jurisdiction stuff, no. Oh, and, and and see, and and how did we do that? How did that come about? And how can you get along with non-Indian people when you have to deal with so much racism? Well, there, we've done it. We, we do it. We live amongst ourselves together. Our children are brought up in the same schools because we talk about it. Think about that. We, we have issues to go forward. If somebody's getting too ignorant, uh, the police, for instance, if a white policeman is stopping Indians all the time, then we talk about it. We address it. If there's uh, something going on in the schools where our children are being attacked, we talk about it. We just don't accept it. And then we respect the fact that 
there's going to be a, a, a period of time until that's addressed. And of course, but so the immediacy of that change doesn't just happen like that. It takes time to work through all of these humanistic things like, well, where's mine? What do I get out of it? That, that individualism that's represented as opposed to the way we see things in respect to individuality. And then going through that, well, we've done that. I, I, I speak to these young people in the schools and, and we talk about racism. I said, if you thought it was racist now, you should have grew, been grown up in the late 60s. Oh man, we used to have fights on the street, you know, big time. Between. But we overcame that. We don't have to come, to come to those. But there are people because of whatever reason, they feel they're superior to us. And they live on an Indian reservation, an Indian land, and they still can't adjust. That's not our problem. That evidently that's theirs. And a lot of it is um, uh, precipitating from a political agenda. Think about that. Okay. And we, we, uh, we, that's why I'm saying we need to really maintain this attitude of apoliticalness here within our podcast so we don't get caught up in those agendas, so we can keep it true and understand the importance of reality as we see it, affording ourselves the right to our own integrity and being able to communicate that. And that's what I feel when I share with my Canadian relatives. How can you guys live here with them? We, we talk, we have relations. Our, our, our men marry the women, the women marry the men. We have families that are connected now. And usually some of them, and, some of the most racist people uh, end up with a, a, a non-white <laughs> in-law. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how we get through that. That's how we work through it. We accepted that. And so just, just, I just, before we ended, I, I wanted to say that because we know how to do it and we're doing it. We're not just being apathetic about it. And we stand up in what we are. And that's what prompted me uh, on Facebook. I put on there, where do you hide your Indian when you're trying to act white? Oh. Everybody thought that was a racist statement. I said, no, we got to evolve beyond that, having to hide that Indianness in order for us to understand the importance of the ability, our ability to communicate. And this is what this podcast represents, is that very attitude, kind of sharing with the people in a respectful way and not being afraid to discuss these issues that to some are very sensitive to that, eh? mm -hmm. learning how to be respectful towards each other's ways and how they, they choose to live their life. Yeah, and I think uh, it's helpful to have a good perspective and I think other people's perspectives, we can't let that uh, throw us out of balance, you know, like over the, the years, I've even heard people say like, oh man, Tommy Christian, that guy's modern, uh, crazy horse, you know, he's, uh, but he's also racist. He's always hanging around the Indians. And uh, I think to myself, you know, uh, he's, he's got a mean golf game and his, uh, his golfing partner, pretty white guy sometimes, you know, but yeah. makes it work. So uh, you can do both, you know, you can uh, enjoy these, these modern luxuries and, uh, and have a, a wicked golf game and, and be part of that sweat lodge ceremony have those good teachings so i appreciate that uh, that, that perspective dex oh uh, okay so i got 355 uh we got a few minutes unless there's anything else maybe we'll wrap it up because if not i'll give a segue on a, a few of the other happenings at the college uh who else we got talk about the maybe possibly and we're looking into it and this is for the students that may be uh, re referencing this later on in youtube or whatever but we're trying to get a stipend involved. Are we still trying to do that for that talking circle on Friday from 11 to noon? Mm -hmm. so we're, we're attempting it. We haven't done it yet, but we're looking forward to possibly maybe the next semester do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Scott? Oh, uh, oh. Just at. yeah. So uh, the virtual talking circle is every Friday uh, from 11 to noon. Um, we send out a Zoom invite to students' emails. So if you're a current FPC student, check that. That's how you can access the, the confidential virtual talking circle. We utilize Zoom. We do not broadcast it on Facebook. It's not archived anywhere. It's just a, a one-time event weekly from 11 to noon. Um, but in order to... No, Toshka. 
that that's as a result of this COVID stuff, eh? Mm. That, that, is, that is coming about because we, we want to keep you safe uh, from this virus, but we understand that this is affecting our people in a negative way. So we have to realize we have to figure out and work out a way for them to communicate some of these depressive thoughts or some of this uh, um, staying at home or affects it. But that all is precipitated from uh, this COVID that, that we're experiencing. And, and we want to keep you safe, but at the same time, we want to give you a vehicle in which you can express yourself. And, it, and it's private. It's not like this. It's, it's very private. So, But we're trying to entice uh, the students to take advantage of that. Hopefully, it'll work out to a stipend, a, a food card, or something like that. Not so just so that it, they can understand it evolved because of the, uh, we had to go into the virtual experience in respect to uh, addressing this ability to communicate our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions at this very trying time because of this virus. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's what we're doing right here, right now. That's why we're really a as a, a result uh, of us trying to be creative um, and, and utilize technology to reach our students in a COVID environment. Um, and so one of the other things is this virtual talking circle. It's um, designed for uh, students to have some place to go to talk. And so we'll, we'll go into a Zoom meeting like this. Um, again, it's confidential. You don't even have to turn your camera on. You, you just show up, there, there's a link. You don't have to have your mic on. You don't have to have your camera on. There's a chat function in there, so you can put in the question comments in the chat function. We just want to listen, but uh, if you want to actually uh, visit and engage, we encourage you to do that too, but it's definitely not uh, required. Uh, we will be uh, providing some type of um, incentive uh, for students to participate definitely next semester, and we might even start doing it as early as tomorrow. So just check your student email, but we definitely want students to be aware that that's what it's there for. Um, what's that? Tell them how much. Oh, at tomorrow, the, uh, is the the first uh, 50 will have at least, I'll try and do more than that if we can scound up somewhere, but at least 50 uh, $25 um, Albertsons gift cards. But you need to log in. We need to know that you're um, you're there. So you have to log in and stay in through the, the one-hour session. Again, it starts at 11 o'clock to, to 12 p.m. And we're looking to raise that and let mm -hmm. that amount go up in the future. Had you to had you to there and then also on this uh, podcast as well, we're gonna have a stipend uh, next semester for uh, students to join live uh, in the, the the Zoom meeting. They don't again they don't have to turn their camera on or raise any questions, but we definitely want you to students to feel comfortable and encourage them to participate because your your mental health. What's one thing we can control is getting this message out there and, and extending the olive branch and encouraging participation. There's other things that, you know, students are just gonna have to do themselves um, for that that overall wellness, maybe that's a, a bad eating habits. You know, Dex really likes to eat a lot of ice cream and kind of gorge, you know, eat his problems away. But but uh, we wanna encourage you to uh, be careful and uh, have good healthy eating habits. But with the mind, I think that's one of the things that we're attempting to do yeah. is to provide a, a good, healthy, safe environment. So. Um, Dexi, his uh, email address, uh, we send it out to students. If you want to talk to him individually, great resource. He can make the right connects to you for uh, cultural resources. Um, there's uh, some other individuals like uh, Mr. David James. I think he is on the um, the Zoom call right now. Are, are you able to, to chime in, David, a little bit about maybe some of the the things that we they can do at the virtual talking circle? And is there anything you want to add to it? No, you're good. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike and Lana, Lana, and oh. Lana Mickelson, uh, David and Lana are both um, staff members here at Student Services. So they will be there as well to kind of help guide. If there's any um, students that have any questions directly, they can contact them. So again, that is every Friday during the academic year from 11 to 12 p.m. via via Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. me, our staff is there, so if you're having any issues, any concerns with any of the staff, student services are there. They'll guide you and direct you to the appropriate avenue to address those concerns. And, and they're, they're so helpful. They're just chomping at the bit. They want to do something because we're all learning from this virtual experience, right, Dave? And, and uh, 
in that, that's that's one of the things our students need to understand is um, it's not like it used to be and it's a little different. Well, let's try to get involved and, and interact in this virtual opportunity to try to get some effect like the, the food cards. That's an enticement, that's a little stipend that to get you involved. And that, that amount is gonna go up as we go more into the year. I can assure you that I know that Joe Scott Elijah is really working hard to get that going because we, we need to, to reach out to, to our students and make sure that they're being cared for. We don't want them to, to get in a depressive state and we don't want them to get involved in the drugs and the alcohol because you got nothing to do. And, 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 and in that, we give you an opportunity to, if you're getting frustrated with the system here at Fort Peck Community College, get us, let us know what's going on. We got the people here that will do it. David, Lana, and Toshka, Elijah, uh, all these folks, any of these staff members will definitely reach out and help you out. And this is how you connect with us for the sake of safety of others and as well as yourself. Is, is that kind of... Oh, how, that's what we aspire to do. That's what we're doing. Again, we're learning. Uh, it's uh, part of... Uh, it better, Tommy. <laughs> how, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's part of being a, a, a Buffalo Chaser uh, Society member oh. uh, here at Fort Pitt Community College. It's something we're definitely trying to promote. Uh, it's part of our song as we do this intro to this podcast. We we acknowledge uh, the Buffalo Chasers, and that's the, the model that we try to follow. Um, also, I just want to let all the listeners know out there that um, spring 21 semester registration is officially open. Um, for next semester, it, it returning students, you can see your advisors and, and enroll right away. Brand new students, um, you can go to www.fpcc.edu and go to apply now. That's your first step. And then get a hold of us here at Student Services. We can enroll you remotely or we can do it face to face, but at the same time, respecting uh, COVID safety guidelines. So you can come into the War Eagle Vision Building. Um, enroll for classes and have a one-on-one -on -one experience with a staff member like like David or Lana, and we'll get you signed up, man. But I'd highly encourage everybody to take advantage of our free tuition and fees. Oh. Let me say that again, free tuition and fees, free tuition and fees. I don't know of hardly any other institutions in the country that are doing this, but right here, we're bringing it. We want to go all out for the students because I don't know how many more semesters we can do this, but a lot of times your biggest bills are your tuition and then for for fees is books it can amount to thousands of dollars and so those of you that have uh, pursued higher education you you can feel the pain right so what we're providing is something that's really unheard of there so it doesn't matter if you're taking one class if you want to take a, a beating for three credits and just uh, work on your your peyote stitch and uh, if that's, that's your thing, you can do that completely free. If you want to take 20 credits and be a science major, uh, all those books and everything, that'll all be paid for. Completely and become paid for. And become eligible for PAL, that money goes in your bank account. You don't have yeah. to cut them. let them know that too. too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. So all of you that are going to be students, uh, that there's no bill, right? So we take that away. Those of you that are what you call Pell eligible, that's one of many different funding sources. That will go directly to you. That will not go to any bill. That money will be directed to you. That's money in the bank. Cha-ching, maza ska, ota. Oh, 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 so that's something we all need, right? Because we all have different needs, uh, children, bills. And so I'd encourage you, any other scholarship, uh, most of our students are eligible for American Indian Higher Education Consortium uh, funding, uh, American Indian College funding. There's all kinds of scholarships out there. Please take advantage of that. Um, another cool benefit of being a student, uh, free meal plan, free meal plan. As long as you're at least six credits, we'll prorate you out, but you can have a meal card, man, you'll be eating good. You will actually get fatter being a Buffalo chaser nowadays. We'll yeah. fatten you up here. Um, another cool thing is um, backpacks. We'll get with the backpack and a bunch of goodies and face masks and all kinds of good stuff, man. So we're really trying to promote that and get the word out there. If you're not interested, uh, please let your relatives know because we believe that education is the answer. We have literally uh, changed the lives of thousands of individuals here at Fort Peck Community College for the better. 
what's unique about our institution is the, the cultural perspective that we have. Um, individuals like actually Tommy, um, I think it's really a unique situation. One of the coolest things I've ever seen, what recently was a, a tribal member that lives out of state is taking advantage of this free tuition and fees being uh, with remote learning. They were very happy to be able to pursue higher education, being a mother and living off the res. Um, they're very grateful of that. And they, they were uh, thankful to Fort Peck Community College. And that made me feel really good. I'm be associated with an institution that's, that's changing lives and be, being able to be dynamic and provide education remotely to our, our tribal people. Makasi yeah. Tomnia, uh, wherever they are across this earth. You have access to internet, we're going to hook you up. Oh, I didn't even, I completely forgot free internet. Yeah. You're a student, yeah. man, free internet. Be at least six credits in degree seeking. And six credits is only like two classes, two, three credit classes. Be degree, pick a pick a major. You could be a general studies major. You could be a mechanic, business major, uh, native studies, native language. I mean, there's literally dozens of different types of degrees and certifications that you can be pursuing that opens the door for you uh, for these uh, free services. So free internet and free laptop, six oh. six credits. And so we are providing again as a recap, free tuition. We're providing food for you to be a student here. We are providing access to the, your education, either uh, in a hybrid format where you could come into a COVID safe environment with masks and one or completely online. And we provide you the internet and the, the laptop to access. So that's really an offer you, you can't refuse. So uh, spread the word. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Did I miss anything else there, Dex, uh, David? I would like to add that if there's any students out there, uh, I'm available to help you with just about anything in Wolf Point on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So feel free to come in. I'll help you fill out a FASA, um, American Indian College Fund, help you apply for higher ed. Uh, we can do all kinds of things. So, and we'll follow all the COVID guidelines and uh, we'll, be, we'll stay safe and we'll get you taken care of. So. Tuesdays and Thursdays all day here at uh, Dumont Building. Oh, Pidama, Dave. Oh, Shtado. Oh, huh. Uh, unless there's anything else, I, I think we're good to go. Medakepi, Dokshta, Ake, Wachia, Kapikte. Oh, Hey, ha, ya, hey, ha. Yeah.